Hello, world. This is an epic tale, rife with destiny, adventure, blood loss, and good against evil. Sorry, I'm wow, you stay busy. Uh, like in the illusion way, or like... Where's my watch? <laughs> on, on the wrist. Wait a second. I... Casio. Watch! My pockets are full. <laughs> yeah. But you have no underwear on now. <laughs> <laughs> and then my watch says boobies. <laughs> Uh, I play Arthur Everest, uh, who is uh, a, a damaged young man who becomes a very unlikely uh, superhero sidekick. Uh, I play Dot Everest, who is also damaged and is a very likely superhero um, who isn't one, and yet <laughs> saves everyone just endlessly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am Peter Serafinowicz, and I play a character called... The Tick, and the show, the show is called The Tick, and um, I'm a superhero who, um, how do I describe this? You know what? This is probably the 800th interview, and I still can't work out how to describe my character. Uh, he's, a, he, he's a superhero who is a, who's very much at home with uh, punching criminals and saving people, and he's very much not at home with pretty much everything else. <laughs> I would like to be able to uh, kill people with just the power of my mind. I can feel it now. Can you? Uh, wow. Maybe I have the power. <laughs> um. <laughs> Maybe, is that why that other interviewer died? <laughs> I think so. That's why you were in that room for so we're long. We're thinking really hard. Just trying to dispose of a body. Um, uh, um, my, my answer is I would want to be... Bradley Cooper in Limitless without the drugs, um, <laughs> uh, where you can like flip through a book in five seconds and just re retain yeah. without and without being Bradley Cooper, but also fluent in French. Um, uh, <laughs> but we retain all, every piece of information you ever encounter and can kind of just look around and, and uh, observe everything and create math. And I would want that sort of super create brain power. Math. Create math or math <laughs> or math because he probably could. You could. Also, you'd you'd could. look at a book about math because there are books you'd about math. You'd learn how to make math very quickly. And you'd learn and it'd be the best math. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I would choose uh, invisibility just because like, I love being alive. A lot of times I resent having to be a physical form. <laughs> you know, just like, oh, God, what a burden having to be a thing and make sure there's nothing in my teeth. And but if you're invisible, you're still physical. Yeah, but I wouldn't know it. Do you I'd know like, it, but I wouldn't see it. You wouldn't okay. have to see yourself. Yes, that's you would the feel short yourself, answer. But right. you wouldn't have to see yourself. Right. I get there it. is so much to unpack. Right? There's a lot to unpack there. We could dig into that. <laughs> I can, no, I get it. I, I, I yeah. <laughs> I think of a weird thing. Well, uh, I, I was watching the OJ, what was that? Made in America documentary. And... In a way, he's he was like a superhero, you know. And uh, by the way, he's out of prison now, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, the juice is loose. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see the results of that. Yeah, oh. yeah, he he's been pardoned. He's uh, going to be released in like a week, I think. Uh, the juice will be on. loose. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, but like he was <laughs> like a superhero, uh, you know, seen as a, a real life superhero. And then, but there was to illustrate uh, the, this sort of superhero thing that. Um, Thing. I'm using words like thing now. I'll probably use that word quite a few times. I think that's a different superhero, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, wow, wow, well done. Uh, where's my watch? <laughs> oh, um, uh, I, there was a, they used a clip of Burt Lancaster, and I don't know what film it was from. It was a black and white clip of him without his top on, and he's just kind of walking. I don't know what film it's from, and I sort of play that little clip of Burt Lancaster before we do every take. Mm -hmm. I think it's The Swimmer, maybe. What do you mean? That movie? Yeah, Is that what it's called? called? The Swimmer? The Swimmer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's in yeah. Swim Trunks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, yes and no. I mean, Dot kind of, she has a lot of different facets to her, and she kind of has several different identities in a way. Um, I I feel most empowered when she's uh when she's in her derby gear and with it's, I mean I anybody feels powerful when they've got like the Gotham girls around them um, making them look great and I feel very very capable in an emergency when I am wearing my uniform and because I have so many pockets um, and I feel like in a way she's a little bit more at a loss 
when she's just in her like civilian garb. Like she kind of doesn't really know where she fits in if she yeah. doesn't have something to do. You're without your your costume. Your uniform. Yeah, that's yeah. my that's my superhero uniform. You yeah. know, the thing about Arthur is that he is such an unlikely superhero that he doesn't really belong in this world. And even if he's equipped in terms of morality and a sense of justice, he's not physically equipped for these situations. So, so much of my preparation is having to just uh, freak myself out before we start any take, just try to stress myself out as much as possible, which is a really short, easy walk for me. <laughs> but I'm doing anything I can to try to make myself feel as unempowered as possible. But there are those moments where you just look down at what you're wearing and you're like, oh, this is cool. But then I try to knock that out and go like, no, you're stupid, you're dumb, <laughs> and in action, you know? When, when I pick up like the check Can you fly? at restaurants you fly with home? my friends, I fly home. <laughs> when I go to restaurants and I pick up the tab with my friends, I always go like, hey, don't, don't worry about it, I'm a superhero. And I've been losing friends at an amazing <laughs> rate recently. But that's the only way I really try to cash that in. Don't worry, I got this, I'm a superhero, I'm fine, I got this. Uh, yeah, I definitely try to handle medical situations that are outside of my <laughs> area of knowledge all the time. It's been really, it's been dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you could, you, I just stop like stopping at car accidents. <laughs> How many lawsuits are there out against you now? There's so many. It's like a class action now. It's like a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, here's one thing that I try and do is I try and pick up litter. If I see it, some litter on the street, I'll pick it up. Well, good for that. Thank you. Really Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, I'll say this though. There's my, that's my watch. <laughs> um, Peter, you know, we film a lot of the show uh, outdoors in the real streets of New York City. Yeah. And when kids would walk by, Peter would always stay in character. Yeah. For oh, and them. adults too. And adults yeah. too. <laughs> but but particularly with children, it's, it's yeah. pretty incredible because they fully buy into it. They suddenly feel like, oh, there are real superheroes and here yeah. they are in my neighborhood protecting. And you see the effect that has on them. I mean, maybe it will have negative psychological repercussions down the line. But in the moment, all these kids, after Peter goes like, Hey there, continue patrolling these streets. Thank you for your service. You know, he always... Worst tech of I'm trying, yeah. no, It's good, it's great, it's lovely. The arms, I got the arms right. I think. Yeah. But, but, do you remember I remember the kid in Harlem that yeah. punched me? Yes. Somebody punched you? Yeah, Harry kid. Houdini style. He tried yeah, to... Houdini style. Yeah. How does Houdini punch somebody? No, 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 no. he got punched. No. That's how Houdini died. <laughs> yes. Someone came to his dressing room. And Some fan was like, you're getting punched, huh? Yeah, and punched him without him... Preparing? Expecting yeah. and, and tensing his muscles, and he died. Ooh. Yeah. A quick change of subject. That's real. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's real. I was very upset. Sorry, did you, did you not know yeah. that Houdini yeah, no, died? No, no, yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Spoilers. Houdini yeah. 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 listeners. Yeah. 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 It's all. Is it Trump is president. Houdini? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, I don't think about that much when, uh, like, we're just on the street. But definitely, you know, you hope that watching the show. I think all three of our characters are drawn uh, to, are driven by like a really, really strong sense of morality. Mm -hmm. I think all three of us are very selfless people who are mostly concerned with doing the right thing, trying to be forces for good in the world. Whatever level of power we have to actually activate that, we're all driven by that. And it is like. You know, it's exciting. Um, I feel like a lot of superhero shows and movies now are just about superheroes fighting other superheroes. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a show where characters are going out of their way to protect people, save people, acts of kindness. You hope that kids watch it and, you know, we could use more kids like The Tick out yeah. there. Smarter versions of The Tick, right? Yeah. More uh, spatially aware. I don't, but what you were saying about, the, about kids, I, you know, there's a bit of swearing in the show. And uh, I hope that Amazon... Um, release a kid-friendly version of the yeah. show, you know? So yeah. now, because I heard they're doing, they're dubbing, making a German uh, yeah. dub of the show. My German uh, voiceover guy messaged me the other day. Really? Yeah. Yeah. To say from across the pond, oh. I'm, I'm the German you. That's great. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I saw, uh, this is a digression, but I saw the uh, Italian uh, version of Spy, the movie I was in a couple of years ago, uh, where I play this really, it's quite a racist stereotype of an Italian uh, Lothario, uh, uh, not a Lothario, I mean, not a Lothario, basically a, a sex offender. You, you know? Pe Pe Pepe Le Pew, Pe the, the Pe Italian Pe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. Yeah, 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 but like if Pepe Le Pew, <laughs> Pepe Le Pew actually sexually assaulted people um, and uh, and, you know, and I saw the guy, well, I didn't see the guy, but, like, I heard the guy having to dub my 
you know, terrible uh, <laughs> Italian accent. In I, I, I just wondered how that guy must have felt, you know, being an Italian man. Finally, get all right. He's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so if it reassures you, reassures you, you were very funny in that. Oh, thanks you, very you, much. Very Thank good. You. you were very funny. So. Thank you yeah. very much. Ben was very adamant that he didn't want anyone doing impressions of the versions that had come before. Right. I'm an obsessive person. I was already a fan of the Tick, so I read right. everything and watched everything, but he always kind of reassured me. You even got infected with Lyme disease. I did. I got <laughs> Lyme disease as prep for the role, uh, which didn't help much. <laughs> I'd say it actually hurt. It, was, it, ended, the, it yes. ended your role. But there, those four episodes we do where I stay in bed for every scene, <laughs> they had to rewrite the episodes around a bed. Um, but uh, he was always very adamant that like those are alternate reality versions. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to feel the need. The priority should be playing what's written here. Right. But you definitely you look for things that feel kind of fundamental to the character that you can incorporate into what you're doing so that fans are able to recognize, you know, not literal things, you're not trying to do the poses or the voice, yes. but just kind of things that spiritually feel like, okay, that's Arthur, that's Tick, that's Dot, those are the characters, you know? And I think I had a, a bit of an advantage in that as well with my character because uh, while Dot is one of the few characters that has uh, appeared in every iteration of the Tick, um, Ben really wanted to recreate her for this for this version, yeah. um, and not have her exist quite so much as a device, and, and energetically be a little more dimensional, because um, she's kind of this very like snarky voice of reason, like yeah. you know, the one with the sarcastic one-liners, um, and uh, and they really wanted her to be um, very very human, really driven by empathy, and and she is also allowed to be a lot of other things, you know. But these um, versions of Dot were very critical. Her main job was yeah, just to tell Arthur to cut it out, which is kind of what they were. I mean, sort of the. Uh, <laughs> what Ben always said is that he doesn't want Dot to constantly be telling Arthur to not be on this show. Right. Um, and so. Yeah, but it's like it's like it's like the women in Adam Sandler movies. Yeah. Are, are just like you know, shaking their heads and, and wagging their fingers at the men who are just kind just of, trying to have a good right. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so it's it it. it it isn't that with Dot. It's um, and and she's not cynical at all about what's happening. Like everything she's doing and and the way that she's interacting with Arthur as he's sort of getting into the superhero world is coming entirely from a place of like love and and protectiveness. You know, and she'll do whatever she has to do to protect him. You know, if if he won't get out, then maybe she'll have to get in. She but, has a um, lot of reasons to be concerned. She's not yeah. just telling me to not do this because she thinks it's dumb. She's telling me not to do this because she thinks I'm gonna die. Yeah, which is yeah. very real because they both lost their father to this world. So. Right. Um, um, in that way, I feel really fortunate because I'm I'm not sort of beholden to a previous version of the character, and uh, it gets to be new for the fans. And 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 also, you know, you're dealing with the real world of people dying and bleeding, and save you're saving lives. You're actually doing that. You know, is is how you how you live your life and how you're dealing with the loss of your father, and you know, and just getting through life. And and uh, and it's great what happened. What what. How, how you develop over the series and like you know your own secret identity mm -hmm. you know if you will and I and I just wanted to pick up on something that you said just about that like you mentioned in, like the cynicism and uh, it wasn't in this in in this particular context but you said earlier on today about how th th there's, there's nothing there's nothing cynical about this this show in general it's like <clears throat> it's, and it doesn't make fun of superheroes or the genre. It doesn't make fun of it, you know? It, it exists within it, and it's a funny show, but yeah. it's not like, you know, aren't superheroes... Isn't that That's why it doesn't feel like a parody. That feels like the wrong yeah. label. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not, is it? It's it not. has a more genuine love for superheroics than a lot of superhero movies that are ostensibly straight-faced but are kind of trying to deconstruct the mythos and make them all into anti-heroes, yeah. you know, or tortured heroes. This is about it's people a, who really want to do good. Yeah, well, and, and I think I remember you said or Ben said at Comic-Con talking about, like, the idea that this sort of... Um, sentimentality yeah. has gone out of fashion, you yeah, know, and yeah. superheroes that are truly moralistic, that are truly good, yeah. you know, and you can still have nuance and complexity within your character and vulnerabilities, yeah, you know, yeah. but like... Not being tortured, being open-hearted. Yeah. 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 But you know, it's like reconstructed superheroes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what the, that's what the tick is, a reconstructed superhero. I'll build it back up. Just write that right under so. 
I, I mean, I think, you know, the hope is that we've made a show that people who love superhero shows and movies and comics will love because it, uh, you know, looks at this entire prism through which we're telling all these stories and reconstructs it, analyzes it, comes at it from different angles. And also, I think people who don't like superhero mm -hmm. stuff will hopefully like this show because it's putting a much more human story into this unexpected context. And it is sort of satirizing all these different elements that maybe some people are tired of. We're hopefully going to have our cake and eat it, too. That's the goal. I think, I think Griffin said it. I mean, that's that's kind of what I was going to say because, you know, I think there's a lot of talk about fan expectations and, you know, living up to uh, previous versions or feeling faithful to those versions. And, you know, for me, I, I am coming at it as somebody who isn't, uh, has, wasn't a fan before and isn't really involved in sort of the superhero world. And it's something that um, I watch the show and I just, it, it, it delights me, you know, like Peter delights me as the dick. Um, and it is that... It is that open-heartedness and um, and the genuineness uh, within the characters and within the way that the show treats them. And that's a big thing is that uh, you don't need to know anything about the history of The Tick or the previous versions to watch this show. This is an entirely new story we're telling here with these characters. But yeah, yeah you're as equipped going into episode one as anyone else is. Mm -hmm. That was my turn to speak. <laughs> Sorry. It's my turn. It was an addendum. Great. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks for whatever it was you're waffling on about. Um, waffles, ironically. Yeah. <laughs> it's waffling about waffles. Uh, yeah, I, I think that you said about, like, this, I don't think this is, a, for me, it doesn't, it's irrelevant in many ways that this is, like, superheroes. I don't think it is. That's the main thing of the show. A friend of mine recommended watching Friday Night Lights. Do you know, are you aware of this show? Yeah. It's, um, it's about an uh, American football coach, uh, uh, high school football coach. Do you know, do you know cameraman? It's really big in the States. Yeah. Or was really big oh, in the States. Oh, it's amazing. And he said, look, you will love this show. And I was like, but I hate sports and I hate you know, American football is like, what? I've got no idea what's going on, you know. So it's not about that. That's the setting. But it's just about this little town and people and ambitions and they're all their, you know, these characters. You will love it. Anyway, me and my wife, like, binge watched it. And uh, by the end of whatever, however, season four, season five, however many, the last episode, we were in tears. And it was just a beautiful experience and we said uh, we cared more about some of the characters in that show than we did about members of our own family <laughs> and we were only half joking <laughs> two bullets point blank and high voltage plus a three-story drop and look at you you're as alive as a daisy <laughs> Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.